Hey guys, Cascadia Palms here. We're gonna break down the science of a cold frame greenhouse, the most basic version. We all have them, we all love them or hate them depending on your experience. But all in all, we're gonna figure out why these perform the way they do and how you can maximize your performance with them. Now, whether you are a climate geek, a greenhouse guru, or someone who just wants to learn more about these, this episode for sure is for you. To fully understand how these work, we're gonna run through four different scenarios. Number one is, as is, as you see it, nothing intrudes the inside conditions of the greenhouse. Number two is heat retention. We're gonna place heat retention devices inside to retain the heat and see what happens. Number three is air ventilation. We're gonna allow the greenhouse to ventilate with airflow to maximize uh, performance and offset any temperature extremes. And the last one, we'll do heat retention devices and air ventilation to see where it ends up. Now, before we move forward with any experiments, we need to fully understand about where the placement of this greenhouse is in regards to the outside factors. Now, clearly it's on top of concrete here in the back porch, okay? And it's getting full sun, as we can see, which is nice and bright today. And the sun does the direction of this, right? It goes down, down below those houses. Now obviously the winter sun is different than summer in terms of its strength, so just food for thought. And the temperature sensors are located right here in the greenhouse on the rack. And for comparison to the outside temperature, the sensor's located right here. So they're basically very close, but two different worlds. Jill's nice in here, in the greenhouse. It's about 68, 70 and about 43 degrees outside, so big difference. It isn't quite done heating up yet, but once it maxes out, it will sharply decline because the sun in the winter is just not very strong. And this is the only way the greenhouse will be heated. And there's nothing in here to retain the heat. As you can tell, it's just kind of a skeleton greenhouse inside just has the plant racks, and even the concrete's pretty cold. So once the radiation cooling begins, it's gonna cool down very quickly. So the greenhouse, which, by the way, in this scenario, writes its own rules. It's not being regulated whatsoever by anything. So this is the craziest of extremes of any scenarios. One hour ago, it reached its max temperature of 73 degrees and now it's down at 61, 62 degrees, I believe, which is crazy how far that dropped in just one hour. Now, one thing that's really interesting is the graph I have on the screen here shows the temperature and humidity. And obviously it's been a little chilly at nighttime. It's been in the upper 20s, but once the sun glimmers into the greenhouse, the temperature shoots up. But notice how the humidity also shoots down why is that? Because warmer air can hold more moisture and therefore on a relative platform, if warm air can hold more moisture, then the relative humidity is going to go down. Now, why is that? Why would that matter? Well, because again, warmer air holds more moisture. Even if the moisture amount, the total amount in this greenhouse did not change. And because the temperature sensor is in there, it's able to detect that change. So again, as the temperature keeps rising, the humidity theoretically should go down in this closed environment. And there's two stars. Hey guys, it's about 9.30 at night and the greenhouse is at about 28.4 degrees while the deck patio sensor is at 32.5 so the greenhouse is lower than the outside temperature the outside ambient temperature isn't that crazy and actually at 3 15 today the greenhouse officially went lower than outside now why is that so i'm going to go in here to explain this into this Ooh, four degrees colder environment. 
And that's exactly what it is. It's its own environment where the air is stagnant. There's absolutely no outside interference. And earlier today I was explaining about warmer air, how it holds more moisture. The opposite happens when it cools down. All the moisture is released, hence why the humidity spikes up. And the radiation cooling in this closed environment is accelerated so much that it actually can go lower than the outside of this greenhouse. Isn't that crazy? That to me is a, a, a incredible mystery that even though I read about it, I still don't quite understand how that's possible. But that's the science. Science or not, I didn't stop there. I wanted to understand this phenomenon further of why this inside environment was colder than the outside temperature. The outside ambient temperature, right? That term ambient that all of us have become familiar with dealing with palms and plants throughout our career. But I had to call somebody in way smarter than I was. But first, let's get some caffeine. Mm, delicious. As you can tell, we had a frosty morning and I'm sure you've seen some of those southeast snowfall pictures down in Louisiana and Florida. Unbelievable. Almost a foot of snow down there. So they're experiencing a real winter. Right now the greenhouse is actually warmer than the outside temperature. It's about 35 degrees in there and the patio is about 31, I believe. So already it's beginning to heat up despite it being colder in there last night. And we'll go over that data later on about how cold and how warm it got yesterday. So today we are going to ventilate the greenhouse. All we're gonna do is just pull up this, this front door shade about maybe two feet or so to allow airflow and ventilation. And we want to avoid these extreme spikes in temperatures. Now, while it may not get as warm as yesterday, uh, that's okay. As long as we're okay with temperatures maybe getting in the 60s in there um, and overnight lows, um, trying to equal what it is outside. That to me is, is gonna be a better scenario than the greenhouse spiking to the mid 70s and then coming down drastically, which can be bad for your plants. Now, even though the shade will be pulled up, there still will be a greenhouse effect. So it still will be collecting energy inside there. So theoretically, it will be warmer than the outside. I'm, how much, I'm not sure, but the hope is, is that it can be a little more mild versus um, extreme and hopefully overnight it can match the outside temperature and not get colder but we'll see so again the whole purpose of ventilation is to avoid temperature spikes and to moderate the inside conditions we don't want the plants to stress from high temperatures spiking up and then the low is going straight down we want a more moderate approach that will cause the plants to get used to the conditions over time Hence why we're allowing a little bit of air in down below. And yes, it's outside air, but again, the greenhouse will still do its thing and, and trap some of that heat during the day. Now, hopefully at nighttime with, with this experiment, we'll see that it can at least match the outside temperature and not get colder like it did last night. And the reason why I'm doing these experiments is because on YouTube, there's not a lot of videos that show you the science of a greenhouse, but in reality, a lot of us, you know, can't afford thousands of dollars to drop on these expensive greenhouses. If you can, hey, that's great, but you can still take a simple greenhouse, a cold frame greenhouse, the one behind me, and make it pretty darn uh, effective by doing a few things based upon your climate zone. Some of us have warm uh, winter days and, and cold nights. Some of us have cooler days and actually mild nights. It depends on what climate zone you are. So. These scenarios will hopefully help you customize whatever zone you're in and, and um, hire the performance of your greenhouse. Okay, so the ventilation did its job by keeping the max temperature lower during the heat of the day, even when the outside temperature was actually higher than the day before. So that did um, happen, but overnight, unfortunately, the greenhouse was still colder than the outside ambient temperature. And I think the reason is because this ventilation is quite limited. It really only allows one way for air to get in. If you want the full effect, you're gonna have to open up both sides to where it's a cross vent almost. And also 
I think if you had an uh, oscillating fan inside, it'd be a different scenario, which I might do for my last experiment. Scenario three, we're going to now do heat retention. And water is a wonderful thermal mass and will help moderate the greenhouse, especially at nighttime. That is the hope at least. So you're gonna laugh, but I have the trash bag here, uh, double, uh, double bag in case the water, there's a small leak somewhere, but I'm going to fill it with water and there'll be quite a bit in there. And this will sit all day long. And the hope is, is that it will minimize the heating in here during the day, kind of like scenario two with the ventilation. But more importantly is to hold some of that heat from the sun in the water to where as the night cools down, it won't spike down dramatically like it has with the last two scenarios. So let's see. And just for reference, it's a 33 gallon bag, almost completely full, maybe about 80%. Uh, temperature of the water is maybe in the 40s and 50s, I don't know exactly. And notice how I zip tied the top of it off so the water won't get out and that won't affect the moisture or humidity, it just affects the thermal mass being stored in the bag. Well, it's the morning of and the greenhouse has pulled even with the outside temperature. And the water, honestly, doesn't seem that, I mean, it's cold, <laughs> but it's not frozen. So there's clearly some sort of impact that this had in here last night to at least raise it and equal it to the outside ambient temperature. So the thermal mass seemed to have done its job on keeping the temperature from going below the outside ambient temperature, which is good. So that is a small win, but it isn't the whole pie. So we're bringing in an oscillating fan. Now, I know I said originally I would do ventilation plus thermal mass, but the ventilation was a very low impact, if anything, on the inside temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and bring in this oscillating fan. And obviously it's big, but don't be intimidated because even on the lowest level, it's not that strong. But anyway, with circulating air in here at all times, it'll be interesting to see if the high temperature in here is lower than the last few days. And of course at nighttime, with this not being stagnant air, how that will affect the overnight low. So let's go ahead and see. Let's see how this is doing. You hear the humming of the fan in there and you can see the greenhouse sort of expanding and contracting as the, the wind is oscillating inside. It's pretty warm today. It's about 55 degrees outside and about 77 in the greenhouse. So. The temperature rise in here doesn't surprise me, but what's gonna be very interesting to see is if this thing drops dramatically like it has been. Uh, will the fan offset some of that loss? I'm too impatient. Let's get a sneak peek. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh yeah, totally. It's a warm wind. A lot of air movement versus when it's been untouched with the greenhouse effect. This is very different, it feels different. I'd be shocked if this thing just dropped in temperature here in a few hours versus it being a gradual fall. Palm dog got a haircut, he's a little upset. And back to the greenhouse mystery. You know, that thing where I had to find somebody way smarter than I was to figure out why the greenhouse was colder at nighttime inside versus the outside temperature. Who are you gonna call? The right people. The National Weather Service. And the answer was right there all along.
right, it's 3 p.m. as the sun is setting in the western sky, given the palm shadow off the greenhouse there. And ironically, the temperature is the same as yesterday on the outside patio at 49 degrees. And crazy enough, the greenhouse is plus three and a half compared to yesterday. So whether that will hold or not tonight, I have no idea. But obviously the fan has something to do with that, maybe. But we will wait and see. Not a bad night sky for the city. Look at all those stars. Clear and cold tonight. It's about 10 p.m. I should be in bed. A very brief update. The greenhouse is barely holding on to a two degree advantage right now compared to the outside temperature with about a half degree lead last night. So it's about two and a half degree swing and the fan is going. So we'll see what happens in the morning. Feels like summer. My greatest sincere and thank you for tuning in. I hope we all learned something. And whatever you use your greenhouse for, remember, keep your palms in the plane.